In this lesson, you'll be proving Heron's formula. This is a tricky proof, so feel free to ask for a hint any time you need it. Now to start things off, what is Heron's formula? In other words, what's the area of a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C and semi-perimeter S? Right, the area of a triangle in terms of its side lengths is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Okay, let's see if we can prove this formula is correct. Suppose we have a triangle, and let's say its side lengths are A, B, and C. And suppose this altitude has length Y. First off, what's the area of this triangle in terms of its base C and height Y? Exactly, the area of a triangle is one-half times its base, which is C for this triangle, times the height, which is Y for this triangle. Great, so we have a formula for the area, but for Heron's formula, you only use the three side lengths, not the height. So if we can find a way to express this triangle's height, Y, in terms of the side lengths A, B, and C, then we should get Heron's formula. Next, let's say this segment between the altitude and this corner over here has length x. So then how long is this segment over here in terms of c, the length of the entire base, and x, the length of this portion over here? Right, this segment has length c minus x. Now let's see if we can rewrite x and y in terms of the side lengths a, b, and c. First, take a look at this right triangle over here. If we take the hypotenuse, A, and square it, can you write this in terms of the legs X and Y? Excellent! So by the Pythagorean theorem, A squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Next, let's look at the other right triangle over here. If we again apply the Pythagorean theorem, we find that the hypotenuse, B, squared, equals C minus X squared plus Y squared. Let's take a closer look at this term, C minus X squared, which is C minus X times itself. Try expanding this product, multiplying it out, and getting rid of the parentheses. Precisely, C minus X squared equals C squared minus 2CX plus X squared. So let's plug this expression back into the equation. Now notice that we have x squared plus y squared over here, which you already found is equal to a squared. So we can replace the x squared plus y squared with a squared. So check this out. We now have an equation with x, a, b, and c. So we can solve for x in terms of the three side lengths. Then, hopefully, we'll be able to solve for y. So first, let's add 2CX to both sides. On the right side, these terms cancel out. And so on the left, we have 2CX plus B squared. Next, let's subtract B squared from both sides. The B squared terms on the left cancel, and on the right, we have C squared plus A squared minus B squared. Finally, let's divide both sides by 2C. On the left, the two c's cancel out, and so we've solved for x. x equals c squared plus a squared minus b squared all over 2c. So great! Now, what about y? Well, let's first solve this equation for y squared. What's y squared in terms of a squared and x squared? Exactly, y squared equals a squared minus x squared. And we just found what x equals. It's this expression over here. So let's plug this in for x. Excellent, now we have an equation for y in terms of the three side lengths a, b, and c. So we can solve for y, simplify, and then plug that in for the y in the area formula up here. That should give us the triangle's area in terms of the side lengths. Now the most challenging part of our proof will be the simplification. Let's try simplifying this term over here. We're squaring this fraction and we can distribute the exponent, squaring the numerator and the denominator. So in the denominator we have 2c squared. 
Can you simplify this expression, writing it without parentheses? Right, distributing the square, 2c squared equals 4 times c squared. So let's plug 4c squared into our equation. Now without changing the value of the right side of this equation, we can multiply and divide it by 4c squared. And now let's distribute the 4c squared on this difference. You can see why we multiplied and divided by 4c squared. It'll cancel out with this denominator over here, making our lives a little easier. So distributing onto the first term, we have 4c squared times a squared, or 4a squared c squared. And distributing onto the second term, the 4c squared cancels out the denominator, leaving us with c squared plus a squared minus b squared. And keep in mind that we're subtracting here. Okay, let's plug this whole expression back into our equation. Next, let's tackle this expression here. c squared plus a squared minus b squared squared. Yikes! So this means we're multiplying c squared plus a squared minus b squared by itself. Let's use the grid method to multiply these two trinomials. So our rows are c squared, a squared, and negative b squared, and the same goes for our columns. Let's fill in the grid. c squared times c squared is c to the fourth, a squared times c squared is a squared c squared, and negative b squared times c squared is negative b squared c squared. Let's quickly fill in a few more terms. And the last one is all yours. What's negative b squared times negative b squared? Right, so this is positive b to the fourth. So to find the product of these two trinomials, we need to add up all the terms in our grid. So we have a to the fourth plus b to the fourth plus c to the fourth. And then we have two negative a squared b squared terms, so together they add to negative 2a squared b squared. And then we have negative 2b squared c squared, and finally we're adding 2a squared c squared. What an absolute mess. So this whole expression down here is equivalent to this one up here. And up here, we're subtracting this from 4a squared c squared. So let's do the same down here, subtracting it from 4a squared c squared. We can distribute this minus sign, so we have minus a to the fourth, and then we need to switch all of these signs as well. Notice that we have two like terms here. 4a squared c squared minus 2a squared c squared. That leaves us with plus 2a squared c squared. So what do we do now? Well, it turns out there's a great way to factor this mess here. It's equal to the product of these four terms. a plus b plus c, then the same thing but with a minus sign in front of the a, then a minus sign in front of the b, and finally a minus sign in front of the c. Now you could have gone directly from this expression up here to the one down here using a method called difference of squares and then rearranging the terms. But if you're not familiar with that, try multiplying out these four trinomials and make sure you get this expression. So once you've proven to yourself that this equation is true, or if you trust that it's correct, Click here to continue with our proof of Heron's formula. Okay, great. Let's finish this off. Now this expression down here is equivalent to this one up here. Let's see if we can find a more elegant way to write this. Well, our first term is a plus b plus c, which is the perimeter of our triangle, right? It's the sum of the three side lengths. So let's call the perimeter of our triangle p. Now the second term here is negative a plus b plus c. Well, we can rewrite this as a plus b plus c minus 2a, right? Because a minus 2a gives you negative a. So these two expressions are the same, and the a plus b plus c up here is the perimeter p. So this second term is the same as p minus 2a. What about the third term? Well, we can rewrite a minus b plus c as a plus b plus c minus 2b, because b minus 2b gives you negative b. Again, a plus b plus c is the perimeter, so this term equals p minus 2b. 
Finally, try rewriting the fourth term, a plus b minus c, in terms of the perimeter p and side length c. Nicely done. So a plus b minus c equals p minus 2c. Great. So this expression up here equals this long one down here, which we've rewritten as p times p minus 2a times p minus 2b times p minus 2c. So let's plug this in for the expression up here. Now this is an equation for y squared, but our formula for the triangle's area has a y in it, not y squared. So let's solve this equation for y by taking the square root of both sides. So on the left we have y, and on the right we have this giant square root. So let's plug in this square root for y. So here's the area of our triangle. Let's see if we can make this formula a little prettier. Now remember, when you multiply terms inside a square root, like 1 over 4c squared and this whole expression here, you can distribute the root. So this equals the square root of 1 over 4c squared times this other square root. Let's take a closer look at this first root. Can you simplify the square root of 1 over 4c squared? So what expression can you multiply by itself to get what's under the root here? Excellent! So the square root of 1 over 4c squared is 1 over 2c. Let's plug that back into our equation. Now the c up here cancels out the c in the denominator, and then multiplying one-half by another one-half gives us one-fourth. Now one-fourth is the same thing as the square root of one-sixteenth, right? In other words, one-fourth times one-fourth gives you one-sixteenth. So let's plug in this root for one-fourth. And now that we're multiplying square roots, we can combine them. So we have the square root of one-sixteenth times this expression. Now, multiplying by 1 16th is the same as dividing by 16. Okay, we're almost done. We can rewrite this 16 in the denominator as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so let's plug that in. And we can split this up into the product of four fractions. p over 2, p minus 2a over 2, p minus 2b over 2, and p minus 2c over 2. And now let's look at this first term, p over 2. This is half of the perimeter, which is also known as the semi-perimeter, right? So let's replace p over 2 with s, the semi-perimeter. The next term under the root is p minus 2a all over 2. Splitting this fraction, it's the same as p over 2 minus 2a over 2. And as we just said, p over 2 is the semi-perimeter s. And over here, the 2's cancel out, leaving us with a. So this term equals s minus a. Let's plug that back in. As you might have guessed, p minus 2b over 2 equals s minus b. And so finally, can you rewrite this last expression, p minus 2c over 2, in terms of the semi-perimeter s and side length c? Yes, this is the same as s minus c. So after all that hard work, we now have a neat little formula for the area of our triangle. It's the square root of the semi-perimeter s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. So by applying the Pythagorean theorem to these two right triangles, and then using a lot of algebra, we found this formula for the area of a triangle in terms of its three side lengths. And as you know, this is, of course, Heron's formula. That was a very challenging proof, so again, very well done.